Hello and welcome to Rudokin Story Review Analysis Breakdown Research Video, where I will be taking a closer or even in depth look at the several different arcs from the Rudokin Kenshin franchise. And allow me to take you through the Shimabara arc. This was an anime filler arc to cover the gap between what happened during the manga's Kyoto arc and what led to the mythical Jinshu arc. As is the case with most fillers, this arc was created to keep the Rironi Kinshin anime to continue as Nobuhiro Watsuki kept putting out chapters in the manga. It is a sad thing to see an anime production company pressuring the manga artists like this when the anime has caught up with the story of the original manga it is based on. Sad, as in they produce filler episodes, and possibly also sadly, as in the case with Rironi Kenshin, even outright cancel the show because progress on the manga is proceeding too slowly. The Shimabara arc tells the story of the Kenshin Gumi meeting with what was Japan's Christian community at the time. A Rurokin history lesson with Vince! In the year 1549, Portuguese Catholics arrived in Japan, one man leading the charge, who is well known among historians, Francis Xavier. They intended to start a church in Nagasaki and spread the word of Christ from that area. Initially, they had a lot of success in converting the Japanese to Christianity. When these converts were baptized, they were given a Christian name and also were encouraged to adopt Western culture. These methods aroused suspicion among the Japanese populace that the Christians were actually trying to gain a foothold to establish an independent community that was separated from the Japanese nation itself. Under Oda Nobunaga's rule, the Christians enjoyed his blessings, but things turned completely upside down when Daimyo Toyotomi Hideyoshi aroused further suspicions of a Christian revolt. Catholic Christianity was repressed and any followers of the church teachings were persecuted. It was mainly the Tokugawa shogunate who spurred these persecutions. Christians were hunted down and executed, sometimes even by crucifixion. Most notably, the 26 martyrs of Japan who were tortured, crucified outside Nagasaki to discourage Christianity in 1597. The Shimabara Rebellion was an uprising in the southwest of Japan, where the original Christian Portuguese first arrived. The rebellion lasted from 1637 to 1638 during the Edo period. The Bakumatsu took place at the end of this era. It largely involved peasants who were obviously Christians, and the Tokugawa shogunate sent over 125,000 troops to suppress the rebellion. Against a band of peasants, it was pretty simple to assure their victory. Leading this rebellion was a man named Amakusa Shiro, who was beheaded as punishment for his act. Official persecution of Christianity continued until 1850. The remaining Christian community was forced to publicly renounce their faith, but many continued practicing Christianity in secret, becoming known as Hidden Christians or Kakure Kirishtian. It wasn't until 1871 that Japan opened up towards all possible religion. Remember that Rurouni Kenshin starts out in the year 1878, which is the 11th year of the Meiji era. So while according to official history, Christians were no longer persecuted for their beliefs, reality has it that many, often corrupt government officials and enforcers were still aggressive towards Christianity. This meant that even though they could practice their religion in safety, it was very difficult for them to do so, and wisely, many of them kept on being hidden Christians. The Shimabara arc is a fictional continuation of these events. What would happen when another rebellion would take place, this time in a much more peaceful and open-minded era? Christians were still being discriminated against, and this would lead into the unrest that this arc covers. It all starts out when a couple of mysterious assassinations happen in Kyoto. This draws the attention of the Onewa Banshu, most notably Aoshi, Misao and Okina. They discover that the victims of these murders are all connected to the original Shimabara rebellion and that these were government officials who wanted to keep Christianity repressed. The Kenshin Gumi is notified by the Onewa Banshu members in Kyoto. Kenshin and the gang decide to travel to Kyoto themselves to get to the bottom of this. It is here that Aoshi reveals to Kenshin that he fears the assassin to wield a blade very similar to Kenshin's own, that of Hiten Mitsurugi. This is later confirmed by Cho, who fights the assassin straight on, even claiming that Kenshin's sword is no match for the unknown assassin. This spurs Kenshin to meet up with his sensei once more. As he travels to Hiko Sejiro's cabin, his sensei reveals a story that places a shaming mark on the Hiten school. For a student of Hiten Mitsurugi to become known as a master, the student needs to counter his master's Kuzu Ryusen with the Amakakero Ryu no Hirameki, as Kenshin did. The man that was supposed to become Hiko Sejiro the 13th was in actuality not the Hiko we all know, but a man called Hyoe Nishida. 
When one fails the final test of Hiten Mitsurugi, there is only death. But Hyoe managed to miraculously survive as he plunged down a waterfall severely wounded. Several decades later, rumors surfaced that Hyoe had indeed survived and was living on a certain continent. It is also revealed that Hyoe is a hidden Christian and lived in Portugal, which has freedom of religion. A decade or so later, Hyoe returned to Japan, bringing along a man who is said to be a god. This man is known as Amakusa Shogo, believed to be the second coming of the original Shimabara leader Amakusa Shiro. Hiko also tells Kenshin that Shogo managed to surpass godlike speed at barely 14 years of age and also succeeded in defeating Hyoe's Kuzuryusen, making him a Hiten Mitsurugi master. While Hyoe is not qualified to pass on the name of the Hiten Mitsurugi school, any attack that can defeat the Kuzuryusen head on must be the Amakakero Ryono Hirameki. This created an adversary for Kenshin that was introduced to be on equal grounds to our hero and possibly even be better than him. After what happened during the Kyoto arc with a villain so powerful as Shishio Makoto, the anime studio had to come up with a villain that had the reasons for revenge, obviously being the oppressed Christians in Japan and that was intimidating enough in power to be able to defeat Himura Kenshin. I have to admit they were pretty successful in coming up with a fitting opponent for Kenshin, who after defeating Shishio had faced off against his strongest adversary and came out victorious. It was also interesting to see another Hiten Mitsurugi user in the story. What else could best Hiten Mitsurugi but Hiten Mitsurugi? Hiko goes on saying he himself feels the necessity to travel to Shimabara to put a stop to Shogu Amakusa himself, but he places the task on Kenshin's shoulders, saying his student could be useful in this situation, a clever way to prevent Mr. Superman himself from dealing with the affair in less than one episode. After learning the facts, Kenshin and the gang head to Shimabara, where they meet with Dr. Elston, after Yahiko bursts forward to please his appetite for sponge cake. Elson is a Dutch consul in Japan. Apparently, Kenshin saved his life during the Bakumatsu after anti-foreign thugs tried to kill him. This establishes a connection between Kenshin and the authorities in the area, which will come in handy later on in this arc. And yes, Yahiko does get his punch cake. There is also a connection between Sanosuke and Shogo Amakusa's sister, whose Christian name is Magdalia. Sanosuke rescues Magdalia and her loyal bodyguard Sozo from corrupt police officers who ambush the duo and also steal Magdalia's medallion. Sanosuke has a short brawl over the medallion with Sozo after Magdalia condemns Sano's barbaric actions. This displays Magdalia's firm Christian beliefs, the turn the other cheek mentality, but Sanosuke just calls her self-centered. Sano stays in possession of the medallion after taking a dive off a cliff while Kenshin meets up with Hyoe Nishida to reveal more of Shogo's background. Hyoe was blinded by Shogo after he advised him not to go too far with his lust for revenge, which is to overthrow the government and create a safe haven for all Christians by taking control of the entire country. Hyoe pointed out to Shogo that his plans divert his power from their lord's teachings, to which Shogo responded with a I don't care, I have no need for such a lord. With that in mind, it is obvious that Shogo's lust for revenge is greater than his belief in Christianity. While he does retain some kind of respect for the Christian value, his followers claim that only Lord Shogo may take lives, and that he is the only one who may judge upon others, much like God. This way, Shogo does become their god. But even a god that does not follow his own teachings is still a hypocrite in my opinion. Apart from his plan for revenge, Shogo also wants to kill the legendary Hiten Mitsurugi swordsman, Himura Kenshin, in order for him to make his Hiten style the true Hiten Mitsurugi, which he definitely shows promise for since he even goes as far as to add a new technique to the Hiten Mitsurugi, Rai Ryusen. Shogo's godlike status is supported by the miracles he performs, such as fancy fire circles, healing people that could not be healed and turning day into night. This is later revealed to be, by Misao no less, because of his extensive knowledge in medicine and astrology, gained while he was living in Europe. The Christian followers of Shogo Amakusa are led further into what I can best describe as a sect, not a Christian community, by a man named Kaio. Kaio was born on the continent, his mother was Japanese and a hidden Christian who fled Japan after the Christian persecutions. Kaio grew up vowing revenge against the nation of Japan and returned to Shimabara while he waited for his messiah to appear, which he found in Shogu Amakusa, a man so full of charisma that, strengthened by the miracles he performs, would turn people into loyal followers without having second thoughts. Kaio controls everything from the shadows as he plots to overthrow the Japanese government, siding with a foreign nation who provide him with the army to do so. 
As Kenshin and the gang get mixed up in these events, they are quickly separated. Yahiko goes after a couple of kids that threw rocks at him and Kaoru, who wanders off on her own into a dark cave. As Kenshin and Sanosuke get attacked by a pack of wild dogs in the same cave labyrinth, they split up to escape this threat. Kenshin is left to fend for his life against a fat round man that controls these dogs with a whistle. During this struggle, Kenshin finds out that Kaio has influenced everyone claiming that Kenshin is a demon that will kill them all. Eventually, the fat round man loses his balance, falls and breaks his dog whistle, making him unable to control the pack of dogs. Kenshin, being the man he is, saves the poor fellow from a certain death. To his surprise, the fat round man learns that Kenshin is not a demon Kaio has claimed him to be. Confused, he runs off to ask Magdalia what he should do, since she teaches that anyone who is kind to you is a friend. He leaves Kenshin tied up to a tree. Meanwhile, Sanosuke is still trying to prevent from becoming dinner. Successfully evading the dogs, he drops Magdalia's medallion. Yahiko searches for Kaoru but is unable to find her, but he does spot a ship and a man, Santo, that the group had previously met with the console Elstim. As the ship boards, it becomes clear that there are some bad vibes going on here. Kaoru stumbles into none other than Shogu Amakusa himself, just before he vows to kill Himura Kenshin that same night. He tells her it is destiny for Kenshin to fall against his heavenly sword. When the Hiten Mitsurugi of Heaven crushes the Hiten Mitsurugi of Earth, that sword will be called the true Hiten Mitsurugi. Indicating that Shogo does care for the reputation and name of his sword style, which still isn't a true Hiten Mitsurugi style. They talk some more with Kaoru playing the devil's advocate, desperately trying to convince Shogo not to kill Kenshin. Their conversation is interrupted by Magdalia appearing and the fat round man a bit later, who tells them he has captured Kenshin but does not know what to do with him. What, except tie him to a tree? I'm sure Megumi would know what to do. Obviously, Kenshin easily broke free from his restraints but decided to wait for the fat round man's return, because if he did flee, the fat round man would get in trouble or even killed. Shogo, Magdalia, the fat round man and Kaoru arrive at the hill. The fat round man surprised he broke free from his bonds. Shogo mocks him, saying Kenshin takes his vow not to kill to a foolish extreme. Naturally, a face-off between the two ensues, with Kenshin telling Shogo that his objective is not to defeat him, but to teach him the laws of humanity, protect the people and help save their lives. If one uses Hiten Mitsurugi and does not follow this belief, it cannot be allowed. Kenshin offers him the last will and testament of Shogo's old master, Hyoe, asking him to read it before they fight. Shogo stubbornly refuses. Against the sword of heaven, the beliefs of humans are all but meaningless. It is obvious that Shogo suffers from extreme vanity and also takes his god complex to a whole new level. During their battle, it becomes apparent to Kenshin that Shogo does use the real Hiten Mitsurugi and that it is even faster than godlike speed. Ultra godlike speed. Also claiming that even Hiko might be surprised if he saw it. They change some combos and have a talk amongst Hiten Mitsurugi connoisseurs as Kenshin is being up performed with every hit and move, there is but one option for them to finish the battle. Shogo baits Kenshin into using the ultimate technique, the Amakakero Ryo no Hirameki, by performing the Kuzu Ryusen, which is unblockable to any and all moves except for the Amakakero. Not wanting to show off his strongest technique, Kenshin counters Shogo's Kuzu Ryusen with his own, but because of the weight difference, Kenshin loses his foothold. However, by seeing Shogo's Kuzu Ryusen, Kenshin was able to find out what drives Shogo, saying he has seen through the depths of his heart. Shogo decides to give Kenshin a punishment worse than death. He performs the Rai Ryusen and blinds our beloved Rironi. Thank you for watching. Keep in mind that this is only part one of my look at the Shimabara arc, so click that subscribe button to get instantly notified when part two or any of my other Rironi Kenshin videos are posted on this channel. Have a great day and see you next time.